FreeCAD is hu a huge project, much bigger than only for the architectural field. So uh, we are several from the FreeCAD developers here. Uh, they are here. Raise your hand. Yeah, they're there. So if you're interested in the, in the project and seeing it, uh, come talk with us uh, later during the weekend and, and we, show, we show it more in detail. We explain it all. So uh, this is me. Yeah, I say I'm one of, of the main developers because there is no really real structure in the, in the FreeCAD projects. Like everybody can be a main developer. It's just that I'm there for more time. Uh, this is how to contact me. This is my architectural office. Uh, I live in Sao in Sao Paulo. I'm not Brazilian. I'm Belgium. I'm a fake Brazilian, <laughs> but uh, that's our office. That's what we do. It's just a small two people office, and um, we we use FreeCAD, FreeCAD more and more. It's beginning to get to be to become our let's say part of. A big part of our, our tools, we use almost only free software uh, at work, and uh, just a couple of things we still use, a couple of free options that are not free software, but most of it now is, is open source software. So uh, for who is totally uh, new to architectural design, I'll explain quickly what we do, actually. Uh, this is wh how uh, architects used to work b before you had those big drawing boards and you were just drawing s seriously like that. Um, this is actually what you do when you, were draw, when you draw uh, architecture. You have a building and y you make the drawings of the, the sides of the building and you also cut through the buildings that are those plants there, and so you, you make those sections, vertical sections and horizontal sections, which are plants uh, through the building. And you basically draw all these drawings, uh, so people who build the house read those drawings and know what to build and how, to, how high, how thick, and, and, and so. Um, when the computer came in, uh, like 20 years ago, um, this is AutoCAD, which was the big software that architects began to use. And AutoCAD is, was at that time, but it's, well, today is a bit more. But it was basically a computerized uh, drawing board. So you would draw in AutoCAD the same way as you were drawing uh, on the drawing board. You were drawing lines and drawing all those, those things. Um, this is a typical architectural drawing. Uh, so you basically draw the, the uh, building and you annotate a lot of stuff uh, in it, uh, dimensions, so people can uh, read the dimension, know what, uh, what size is each thing, and a whole lot of annotation. This must be concrete, this must be um, metal, and uh, this must be built before that, and those kind of uh, things. The, these drawings are interesting because they are from uh, uh, Alejandro Ravenna, who is just won the Pritzker Prize, which is the Nobel Prize of Architects. And um, this is open source now. These are his famous projects. It's a house uh, for, uh, it's a popular house uh, for poor people and they don't have a lot of money. And uh, so he built this project, which is a half, half good house. That's the, the idea of it. And um, this is fully open source now. You can find it uh, online. So this is um, what um, this is what BIM is now. Um, basically, we don't draw anymore. We model. In, in 3D, and so you model things, and then you you can cut through the, the model and uh, extract the the drawings. So you don't model and you don't draw anymore. You model in 3D, and then you extract your um, your drawings f from it. And this is the kind of drawings that you can uh, obtain in FreeCAD directly from your 3D model. And uh, of course, BIM is much more than 
just a 3D drawing. Uh, inside the model, you have a lot of information. And uh, so from your model, uh, that's the whole thing of what we call now BIM, wi which is like... Um, uh, BIM is, is hard to define, actually. It's what uh, all architects would talk about BIM. Uh, yeah, now we don't do CAD anymore. CAD was the 2D drawing I showed you. Now we do BIM. But it's actually pretty hard to know what I is BIM, actually, because uh, there are lots of... Um, people with different interests and companies who would sell you soft BIM software, and each of them has a different um, explanation of what BIM is. Uh, but let's say it's the 3D model with a lot more information. You know, all the, those um, notes I was showing you in the earlier slides. Um, these all notes would be like information that's contained inside the model. And then from your model, uh, all the walls have information about what material it's, it's made of uh, and such. And so you can extract that information from your model and build all those kind of tables, drawings, um, renderings, because you have all the uh, material information. And so in your model, it's not just the geometrical 3D. It's the wall information about the building that is stored inside the inside the model. That's the interesting part of BIM. That's what we call, how we could define it, actually. It's a 3D model which, with much more information in, in it. Uh, so BIM is used, it's like everybody talks about BIM. Uh, in some countries here, especially in Europe, it's pretty much it's used a lot. And uh, the governments are um, you know that when you will build a house, you have to ask permission to your government, to your city, or something, and they will, they, they will give you an authorization to build. And um, you have to give your project to them to, to, to obtain the authorization. And um, in, uh, in most European countries, and in the United States as well, they begin to... Uh, I think they are of all like deadlines uh, in a couple of months or years, uh, you will have to give them a BIM model to obtain the, the authorization. But in some other countries, like in Brazil, uh, people, architects still work mostly in 2D, like before. They, they won't use 3D models a lot. Uh, so it's something in between that's getting used, but not totally used everywhere. And... Um, and the last line here is the real problem. Um, you have two firms, which are Autodesk and Nemechek, uh, who are selling about 100% of the BIM software used in the world. And it's not something cheap. I think one license of one of those things cost about $5,000, something like that. Huh? And um, for one person in, in the office, so you have 20 architects, it's 20 times, and um, so th they are like presented as all-in-one solutions where you have your BIM model and you do everything only in that software. You extract the quantities, you do the calculation, you do everything in it. And they have that aggressive domination tactics. They, they uh, go to university, they talk with um, architecture teachers in the university, and they make deals with universities, so universities only use those software and students and teachers get it for free, so that they this um, maintains a, a state where uh, students and teachers only know that software, and after that they won't change easily when they are beginning their, their professional life. Um, and they have also file formats which are like uh, every year there is a new version of the software and. The old version doesn't open the files of the new version, so they like force you to, to upgrade every year. Um, and this is really uh, seeing the, the problem. If you uh, type Revit architecture in Google, you get this, and you get the it, you, you, it can go long, and you will see that all those buildings actually look the same. So it begins to have a style that, uh, oh, I'm talking a lot too much. So you begin to have a, s a style that it's uh, 
given by the software. The, the software uh, end up configuring how architecture looks. Um, so there is a good side, which is um, that there is, for the first time, um, open format, which is IFC. And this is maintained by a consortium, a bit like HTML on the, on the web. And it's human readable. Um, so it's just lines that reference each other. That's a structure, typical structure of an IFC file. And so now we have an open file format to describe BIM building. And it's, a, it's not perfect, it's far from good, but it's the best thing we've ever had in, in the construction world. So uh, yeah, everybody knows Blender here. Um, why Blender f do those 3D? Why don't we use Blender for architecture? And it's true, why not? Uh, I, we use it a lot uh, at Office, actually. Uh, it's fast, it's mesh-based. Mesh um, Blender is, is extremely cool to work with. Uh, you have those things that come from the game engine uh, of Blender, so you can work architecture in, in real uh, situation, uh, and it's thrilling. You wouldn't be able to do that with those commercial software, like working like if it was in, in a game. Uh, and this is tremendously interesting to, to work uh, architecture that way. Um, and of course, it, you can do the rendering directly in Blender. So you have like the whole cycle of the things you must produce uh, in the same software. So why not, actually? Uh, I think because uh, Blender is mesh-based, it's made for speed. And you know when, when you draw, uh, there is that direct connection between your, your brain and your, your hand, like uh, you're on the phone and you're sketching, and when you look at your drawing, something came out of it, uh, because there is that direct connection between your brain and your hand that you don't need to think. And Blender is so fast that you can almost have the same thing with 3D modeling, like you're thinking about something else, and when you see, you modeled something cool. And so this is tremendously interesting. But for architecture, we also need precision tools, uh, something slow that makes things exact, like it's 20 millimeters, not 21. And um, for that, uh, there is actually FreeCAD. And um, FreeCAD is a technical 3D modeler. It's not made for organic and nice things. It's made for precise, exact geometry. And it's, for me, it's the other side. Blender is the creative side, and FreeCAD is the, the technical serious side. And you need both. You cannot work only with one side. And there are those advantage of the, of advantages of FreeCAD that would, I would explain outside where, for who is interested. Uh, and we have a special architecture module in FreeCAD, which mostly me and the other guys here uh, contribute to. And um, so it's really, we made it to work with Blender. Uh, so it would take your Blender mesh, as long as they are cleanly made, and turn them into architecture model. Um, so this is the look of FreeCAD. Uh, it's a very basic interface. Uh, you can do all the things we were, I was talking about earlier. You can cut through your models and extract those drawings. You can also, there is a spreadsheet module in FreeCAD where you can extract all those volumes and quantities are directly read from your model. Uh, so you can extract information from your model. So it's perfect to build BIM model. And um, these are a couple of projects uh, we make made at the office. All this section is taken from this model. Of course, it's a bit reworked in, in the GIMP, but you can really extract most of your stuff from your 3D models. Uh, another project, this is when you hit, it's uh, exported to IFC, so you can import it in, even in those commercial softwares. Another project, this is the plan that comes from it, also a bit reworked afterwards. Uh, this is a model from Jonathan here. Uh, also, um, you have those, FreeCAD gives you those interesting uh, ideas about how you could not anymore uh, show architecture like traditionally with drawings, but a bit like IKEA uh, um, 
manuals and you begin to have, because other people use FreeCAD that are not architects and give, they give you ideas that you wouldn't have normally, that pe other people would present things different way. Uh, we also have, FreeCAD is more and more used for 3D printing. And um, so this also gives us new openings and possibilities uh, that, that are closely uh, related to architecture and that we don't think normally, but those guys are here around us. And so we communicate and we get new ideas. Um, this is the um, structural analysis module. This is a work of Bent here. And uh, you can also study uh, effort, real life efforts in your model and see what happens in, in your models. Uh, you could do that also for thermical uh, simulation that's not yet there yet, but all the structure is there to, 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 to be done. Uh, this is another piece of software which is called Sweet Home 3D. And it's interesting because it's, uh, it's a toy. You would say this is not an architecture software, this is some, a toy to, to, to place your, uh, your um, furniture inside your house. But it's tremendously interesting because it's a tool that anybody can use who, has, who is no architect. And th the result of this program can be imported in FreeCAD. So you could really have people design their own house and you be able to turn that into technical information. And this is also extremely interesting. And this is another project called uh, WikiHouse. And they build um, those houses out of um, big plates of wood that are cut by a machine. And then you assemble the piece of wood to, to build houses. So we, in FreeCAD, we also are looking at how to do that to and uh, use the, the, the it's an open source project you can take the, their files and we are like trying to 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 bind all those things together um, we still have i'm finishing uh, we still have one small problem is that uh, working in 2d we still need a bit of drawing sometimes uh, hand drawing and uh, there is no real uh, good open open source solution because uh, architecture, uh, you saw the drawings, uh, they are gigantic and uh, usually all the available applications like LibreCAD and, and so the Inkscape would crash miserably when we have those enormous drawings. Uh, but we can do as much as we can, extract as, as much as we can from FreeCAD and we could reduce that needed handwork at something minimal. That's the aim what we're that's what we're aiming at actually um, that's what's coming uh, in FreeCAD in with what we're working on now actually uh, battery IFC support IFC is a vast word we, we need to work with it better and have more convenience tool to draw walls and that those things directly in FreeCAD um, and direct editing which is like pushing your, your walls manually on the, on the screen. Um, well, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. And this is our forum, uh, the FreeCAD forum. That's where everything happens, where all the community, where all the developers uh, talk. And if you're curious, get involved there, because there is a lot happening uh, there. These are the websites. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>